Every one of us wants to be a better person. You ask people of all backgrounds, men, women, children, people of faith, of no faith, different races, different cultures. There is no individual on earth that is not striving in some way to improve their character, their personality. It's just that we can be lax at times or lazy or just get trapped in our routines. The question is, how do you actually become a better person, a better you? Now, some of us say, I'd love that to happen, but it's just something that's genetic. I'm wired a certain way. I'm wired to be angry. I'm wired to be a pleaser. I'm wired to um, be too disciplinarian. I'm too weak, too much fear. Some won't say it's wiring in DNA. Others say it's due to life circumstances, habits, patterns, my childhood, dysfunctionality, abuse, violation. And not that we're looking for excuses. It's just that the fact is that each of us is a product of many different circumstances. So like always, everything is in the details. When someone says, I want to make a resolution to be a better person, be specific. How are you going to do that? Are you going to volunteer? Are you going to show some kindness to a stranger? Are you going to help a special child? Are you going to work on a certain aspect of yourself? A number of years ago, I received a call from Salt Lake City, a psychiatrist who ran a rehab center. He was the head of a rehab center for drug and alcohol survivors. And he said to me, you have a book called The Spiritual Guide to Counting the Omer. And it's the best book I've ever found that actually helps my clients, my people. Because it's not generally be better, make good decisions and resolutions and stick to them. It forces one to be introspective and soul search into the specifics of their lives. It's based on a timeless, I would say thousands of year old, Kabbalistic psychological system called the Sfirot, the spheres, and specifically the seven attributes that define the emotional spectrum of every person's life. Love, discipline, compassion, determination, humility, bonding, and dignity. In the Hebrew, it's chesed, gvura, teferes, netzah, chayid, yesayid, malchus. And not just these seven, but the way they interact with each other is the key. And he says, so my clients, they have to each have a journal. And it's, it, it, this is not optional. It's, it, it, it's uh, mandatory that they have a journal. And each day, how, is, how are you doing with your love? How are you doing with your discipline? Which brings me back to our discussion here, and that is that it really comes down to understanding yourself. And when you do so in specifics, then you can work on it. Just to say, okay, you know what? I've been 20, 30, 40 years a certain way. I'm going to change. That's usually too formidable. But when you start breaking down, what kind of character are you? What is your emotional makeup? And where do you stand? Evaluate yourself. So I wrote a book called The Spiritual Guide to Counting the Omer. That's actually based on the Omer counting 49 days, 7 times 7, during this period in time between Passover and Shavuot. And it became much more popular than I ever expected. Well, based on all of that, I'd like to introduce you to a new series, which is founded on this book, which is also an app, my Omer app, and it's called Seven Weeks to a Better You. Seven Weeks to a Better You, where each week we're going to dissect one of these seven emotions with the goal of learning how to soul search, how to be introspective, how to evaluate that particular part of the spectrum of your emotions. And where do you stand in it? Are you strong? Are you weak? Somewhere in between. What can you do to improve it? And each week we will cover one of these seven. 
So I welcome you to this special new series, Seven Weeks to a Better You.